Hey, this is another great video by Ricky Kearney Cichlids. In this video, we're looking at the Libicromus Mabama Bay Yellow Top Mabuna. And this is one amazing Mabuna Cichlid. If you're considering ordering or buying some African Cichlids, you want to check out these before you do so because they're impressive. Now, some people say that they can get them in their area. I never saw them in my area. I had to order them. So they're pretty impressive. Um, from what I gather, these are really, really good top quality. Uh, what I'm going to talk about in this video is some of the things that have changed in the for the Labicromus. What I've been starting to feed them. Uh, some of the changes in their growth and coloration. Different things. So check us out this video. It's one you don't want to miss because these are some amazing fish. What I'm going to do is get more of a close-up of the fish. You don't just, you're not sitting there, sitting there seeing me. You're sitting there seeing the fish. And that's what this is all about. This video is about seeing the fish. And let me tell you a few things about them that you may not know. So I'm going to start this video out by showing you the amazing uh, alpha male of these, this bunch. Looking great. Let me zoom out a little bit. Amazing bunch. Uh, they start out at first being a little bit uh, shy, but now they're really liking the food. The water quality is doing great. Uh, they're they're out and about. You see, they're wanting food. So later on in this video, you'll actually see me feed them food. Now, if you look to the right, let me just put my finger slowly over there. Over there, right. Oh no, you don't see it. There's actually the subdom. There's actually more than one subdominant male. I believe that this one here, right there, is the subdominant male, and also this bigger one right there. So in the past, I thought there had only been going to be, you know, there were only two males. But there's actually at least three in here. Uh, it looks like some of the other ones are, most of the other ones are females. It's possible that there may be one or two males that I don't know about. But it looks like we have three males in here. Now what I do like about the Labicromus, not just the Mabama Bay, but normally uh, the males can get along with other males until they get to extreme size and there can be a little bit more fighting. Now on your peacock cichlids, or other cichlids, a lot of times when you're talking about some aggression of the males, males with females, the males kill off the other males. Uh, there's a little bit of aggression here, but it's just a little bit of a case. With peacocks, they, they don't let up until the other male's dead. So in the past, my Labicromus have done really well with extra males in there even though they're in a breeding setup uh, where in the, with peacocks that can sometimes be troublesome you can have several males with several females and do all right for a week or two then bam uh, one will be dead so these guys are easy to breed they're already this bunch uh, this group here is already breeding now me myself uh, I like to wait till they're a little bit bigger before I start collecting them because when they're smaller uh, they uh, are a little bit harder to get in your hand. If you ha my, I actually have small hands and if you get a real small fish in your hand uh, it's easier for it to squirm out or not get a, get a good grip on them so I don't like to strip them when they're small. Now what I've done here recently is I've set up a new uh, rockscape. It's not anything great, but it's something different. Uh, when you're doing your aquarium setups, uh, don't get just set up with one setup and let it go. I had to be reminded by a uh, subscriber that hey, you know, it looks like your tour, most of your uh, aquariums look like they've been the same way for a while. So that got, got me to thinking, hey, you know, I'm, 
I need to get some more exciting things going on. Not only does it make it exciting for the viewers and for yourself, but it makes it exciting for the fish. The activity in the fish, the behavior changes when you change the scape. Now, one thing that I, I like to have for Labochromus mabama mabunas is sand for the substrate. Sand has an enormous amount of beneficial bacteria that's good for your aquarium. Now, the only thing I have in this for this filtration in this aquarium is a sponge filter. And for a year and a half, they've done great with just a sponge filter. They've been breeding. The coloration's been coming out great in them. You see the yellow coloration in the females. That's doing great. So, also I have a, an Anubis plant in here. They leave it alone, but like some of the other plants that I've had in here in the past, they don't do too well with. Like Java fern, they'll tear up. Uh, the Anubis plant, they don't they don't eat the leaves. They grow out fine. And it grows good. Uh, leave them alone. So a Anubis plant is a good plant to have with the Labichromus. Now I'm going to take the time to get the food and show you uh, how they eat, and then something it's going to be a little bit different than what you've normally seen the mabuna eat. So let me do that. Now for feeding the mabuna, there's a lot of information on mabuna saying that uh, you know you should have mostly plant materials, plant products to feed them with. Okay, in the past I've uh, used algae wafers and it just destroyed the quality of the water in this tank instantly. Instantly. Uh, for most of the types of pellets that you can use, it has fish meal in it, which fish meal means there's fish, you know, pieces of fish in the product, in the food. A lot of people say you can't feed fish to Mabuna because of their digestive system. Well, you know, I've raised Mabuna for years now, uh, many years, going on around 10 years now, and the one thing you notice when you're, you're breeding your fish is if a female lets go of the babies, uh, the other fish go crazy and gobble them up, which right there shows you instinctually they will eat fish for food. So what I've got here is artificial crab meat which has pollock in it which is a fish from around the uh, Alaska coast it's got lobster in it, crab meat, anchovies and it also has paprika for coloration I want you to see how they eat it here hopefully you'll get a good view of it let me put it over here there we go starting to eat it up look at them going to it like crazy it's tearing it up it was already gone. That piece was already gone. Here's another piece. Look at it. Look at him. Look at him just going for it. Let me zoom out a little bit. Look at him just tearing it up. They love it. Now when I feed them this, it's only once a day, every other day. That's all I feed them. I don't feed them anything else. A lot of times people overfeed their cichlids. You can cause a lot of problems by having overfeeding of any type of fish. Uh, these guys love it. Their coloration has really come out. Uh, they've grown a lot faster. For the, these are one of the slowest cichlids I've had uh, in the past to grow. Uh, because I think they were a little bit malnourished when they were first uh, raised but now their growth rate is taking off and it's because of this artificial crab meat so artificial crab meat you can get for like five dollars uh, most supermarkets for a pound a pound can last you for a long time it's really good stuff it's good for coloration and I have no ill effects with these Mabuna I've been feeding them for uh, about two months now uh, and like I say if you have ever raised Mabuna and seen the female let go of her fry and see all the other Mabuna just go for the fish and eat it, you know the natural food is fish. Uh, it shouldn't hurt them at all. So it's something you want to, want to check out for a Mabuna or for your other cichlids. Uh, artificial crab meat is just wonderful. It's just great. 
uh, and it, it has less uh, waste into the water. When you see your cichlids eating uh, pellet food, you'll see a lot of the waste go out the, the gills. A lot of that extra food is just becoming waste and it's broke up and they're not going to eat that little broke, broke up fine pieces of pellet in your aquarium. With this food right here, it is staying in a, in a compact manner and it's not going into waste and then your water quality is going to improve and so is your fish. So I hope you, hopefully you'll uh, take some of my ideas here and information I've given you. Uh, at least enjoy looking at these yellow top Mabuna, Mabama Bay Mabunas because they are really amazing. And uh, maybe you'll get some for yourself. Thanks again for watching Ricky Kennelly Cichlids. Hopefully you'll watch some more videos by Ricky Kennelly Cichlids. Thank you.